Students in the South West this week stepped up their campaign for a so-called people's vote on the Brexit deal the government finally thrashes out with the EU. It comes as the process of arriving at that deal in the first place continues to unfold as painfully and slowly as ever at Westminster. Tamsin Melville reports. Students have got form. They rallied over the issue of tuition fees, and now there's a movement to make a similar stand over Brexit. Have you got a couple of seconds to talk about this today? I do indeed. Perfect. Yes. So there's this thing um, that's going on at the moment called a people's vote, and um, it's essentially saying that regardless whether you remain or leave within Brexit, we think it's really important that we see the final deal before we agree to it. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that um, we think has a lot of appetite from everyone across the political spectrum, because realistically, you wouldn't agree to something before you knew exactly what it was. It's quiet on Falmouth University's campus with exam season in full swing. But there's a warning this is the calm before the storm as a campaign branded For Our Future's Sake gets underway across the UK. Thank you so much. The £350 million to the NHS, the grand trade deal with the US, none of that has materialised. The Cabinet's tearing itself apart um, and can't decide what that looks like. I think it's time that it goes back to the people so that we can say, right, do we like the new deal or yeah. do we like the current deal? Because we'll actually understand what Brexit looks yeah. like and what it means then. If you have a referendum, what does that mean? Preaching to the converted here, perhaps, yeah. as it's so estimated around 70% of 18 to 24-year-olds voted Remain in 2016. But the campaigners say this is about those who weren't old enough then. Do you know, 15, 16 and 17-year-olds who couldn't vote last time won't get a say now if this doesn't happen. So actually it's not, and it's going to affect their future more than anybody else's. So actually those people have the right to say and there'll be over two million more young people with a voice on this issue that won't get listened to. I think the government should involve us in a second referendum. That's people Brexit. like Kira Lewis from Exeter College who's just turned 18. She was sitting a history GCSE on the day of the referendum. It's not necessarily that our voices matter more than anyone else's, but they matter equally. And the fact that we didn't get one the first time and we were denied that um, specifically by not lowering the voting age in line with Scotland and now Wales. Um, young people in England specifically are not getting that equal say. He's ruled a second referendum out, but Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn was on the spot at Prime Minister's questions this week, with a challenge over several shadow ministers recently indicating support. <laughs> when he stands up, he could put the minds of the British people in this house at rest and rule out a second referendum. But it's a general lack of clarity that's frustrating some. It really hurts me uh, not knowing what's going to happen. We've got David Davis, Theresa May going over to Brussels, um, but what do we know is going to happen afterwards? We, we hardly know anything. We don't know about trade, we don't know about the NHS, what's happening to all the funding um, for international students, uh, for our nurses, for the NHS. We just don't know a thing. The enthusiasm for a people's vote doesn't extend to everyone. Do you think there should be a people's vote once we've got the final deal? No. Why not? We've had the vote. Time to move on? How many times? Three out of five? Seven out of ten? How many do you want? We've had the vote. I voted in the 70s to join the common market. We're not in the common market. We're in the union. No way. I don't see that's necessary. We've, we've had one vote and it was decided, so just leave it at that. You can't keep going, otherwise you'll be going on and on with votes and votes and votes. No, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that. <laughs> Definitely not. No. No. Theresa May has said another referendum would be an undemocratic breach of trust with the British people who clearly voted to leave. But there's a march to try and change her mind planned in London for the 23rd of June. As I mentioned earlier, we're joined now from Brussels by the South West Green MEP Molly Scott Cato. Welcome to the programme, Molly. Um, isn't the reality of this that however you try to argue the case, the Prime Minister is right. This is an attempt to reject the clear result of the referendum two years ago? I think as you heard from those young people in the piece, that's not the case at all. I mean, what's really exciting to me is that we're seeing young people mobilising to claim their right to vote. There's about a million and a half people who've come up to voting age since the referendum happened in 2016. And all they're saying is that they have a perfect right to decide their future and pr to protect their rights to travel, to work, to fall in love and have relationships with people across the EU, just in the way we've enjoyed in our lives. And I don't think older people should be able to deprive them of that. But isn't part of the problem here that we've 
we've had a lot of people coming out and making very passionate arguments in favour of remaining in the EU, which, frankly, they didn't make very well during the referendum campaign. But that's rather tough luck, isn't it? Why didn't people like you make a better case during the campaign? Because a lot of Remainers have admitted they didn't. Well, I spent a lot of time talking to people during the referendum, including in Cornwall, and people were voting for all sorts of different reasons. You know, a lot of people saying we want to give the, the Tory government a kicking, a lot of people rejecting David Cameron, a lot of people saying there was too much debt, all sorts of reasons people were saying they voted for Brexit. And at that time, people weren't very clear about what exactly the Brexit deal meant. So all we're saying and what the young people were saying in your piece there is that now that we have more clarity, now that we've seen it's a lot more complicated than people thought, now that most of the promises that were made during the 2016 referendum have been broken. It's absolutely fair to say on the final deal we need a say and actually that's giving us more democracy and, and young people welcoming democracy is something we should support I think. Okay Steve and you were obviously a keen Brexiteer. It is the case isn't it? I mean just looking at the the mess at Westminster this week that it it, it is intensely complicated. How many people hands on heart uh, could have looked at that well, and said well you know um, it's going to be this complicated. The, the point I'd make about that report is, in 1975, I wasn't old enough to vote in the referendum that brought, took us into the common market, but I had to live all of my adult life so far under that regime because of decision democratically that was made in 1975. Uh, this argument that people missed out because they were too young to vote, whenever you have a referendum, there will be people that that will apply to. We made a clear decision as a country. We need to implement the decision of the people and get on and leave. In terms of... Um, you know, the, 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 the current situation. I don't think anyone pretended leaving you was going to be easy or straightforward. We're negotiating with 27 other countries. It's always going to be complex, but we've got a clear mandate from the British people to get on and leave, and that's what we need to do. Paul, from, from Labour's point of view, I mean, a lot of disagreement within the Labour Party. Are you somebody who thinks at this stage that we should be looking at single market membership, staying in the customs union, clean break? Where are you? Um, I, I, I'm ridiculously uh, conformist in this respect. I, I believe that we should maintain a, clo a close link with the EU. I believe that but we should... But that's the same fudge we're getting from the Tory party, isn't it? Everybody would say this is wonderful if, if it can be achieved, but there's no detail. Well, the, 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 prob the, prob the problem is that we're not in charge of the negotiations. The Conservative no, If you were, you, it sounds as if you'd be doing pretty much exactly the same thing as Theresa May. Mm, no, I, I think, um, for a start, uh, we, we wouldn't have pretended it was the easiest deal ever, as, uh, as one of the people who are now in charge of these negotiations said. And, um, and also, we defended it in a different spirit. The pr the, the, one of the issues is that for years, for decades, we've had people with senior members of the backbenchers of the Conservative Party who appear to have been against the EU just from the point of view of not liking to be controlled in any sense from, from yeah, elsewhere. And, 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 and on the Labour backbenches, well, to Tony, Tony Benn, uh, left-wing idol, I suspect, uh, possibly for you? That based on the kind of analysis of the nature, yeah. nature of the EU, which, of course, main, maintains because nobody in the whole world would say it's perfect. I, m m our point of view, my point of view, we had a referendum. I voted Remain, but... We, I lost, and um, and that referendum okay, okay. is okay. Just uh, finally, Molly, what, what do you make of this this ambition on both sides of the house, apparently, to kind of get some kind of equivalent deal without any of the nasty bits? Well, it's absolutely clear that this kind of have your cake and eat it approach has been repeatedly rejected at the Brussels side. I mean, there's absolutely no leeway on that. We could take the option of staying in the EEA, but then, of course, we'd lose sovereignty. So that, that wouldn't be acceptable to me. If we leave the EEA, it's going to be very negative in terms of jobs, particularly farming jobs, if we're thinking about Cornwall. And that's why I'm very clear that now that we see that the sort of bespoke deal that the Tories told us was possible is not possible. It's absolutely right to say we need a people's vote and I will be campaigning very strongly for us to remain in the EU to protect jobs, to protect young people and to protect all our opportunities in the future.